Through Givelify, you can sow a seed. Just download the free simple and secure Givelify app on any Apple or Android device and type Red Oak Grove Holiness Church as place of worship. Then tap Give to sow your seed. While on our giving page, you will have the option to create a profile, which will give you the ability to log in at any time to view your prior online donations or to make changes to any recurring gifts you may have scheduled. Like us on Facebook.com 2013 Red Oak Grove Church and don't forget to subscribe to our new YouTube page by searching for Red Oak Grove C-O-L-G. Thank you and be blessed. Give today with Givelify. Welcome to Red Oak Grove Church of the Living God online broadcast, where Elder Adrian Ivey is pastor. We are located at 287 County Road 154 in Shannon, Mississippi. We pray that your heart is uplifted and your mind is renewed as you listen to the Word of God. Let us now tune in to the service already in progress. 2 Timothy, the first chapter. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, very familiar piece. 2 Timothy, chapter 1. I want to read verses 3 through 7. My focus will be on verse 6 and 7. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. And it reads, I thank God, whom I served from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have, have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. Verse 6, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. If I could read verse 6 and 7 one more time, which we'll focus on if you don't mind. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou Stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. If you don't mind, before you sit down, look around the room and look at somebody and tell them you are gifted too. And now I need for you to speak to your own self just with all the confidence and the energy that you have and say to yourself, I am gifted too. You may be seated in the house, in the house of God. Honor God this morning to everybody in their respective places, all who are tuned in. We do miss our minister of music and his wife. We have a few out who are sick we certainly do miss them um, this morning but we honor you and we are grateful that you came out to the house of God this morning uh, to allow God to speak to our hearts and speak to our minds to all who are tuned in to us we're glad that you are here you are gifted too when I think about being gifted my mind traveled back to South Pontotoc High School when you got in high school, I don't know if they, they kind of labeled that like it is now, but in high school, I remember um, there were certain children or groups of children who uh, were considered a part of the gifted, gifted class. They were those who, there you go, who had that academic intellectual inclination. Uh, they were just smarter. Uh, than the average students, so the school labeled them as being gifted children. Y'all ever been there? I'm sorry, I wasn't a part of, of that, that, that group or that class of children that they considered as being gifted. 
You know, I could remember uh, walking through school and thinking about that, and, and, and as quiet as it's kept out of ignorance, sometimes we made fun of those who were, who were gifted. But now, uh, standing here at 41 years old, looking back and thinking about this thing, how ignorant was I, but I really had an issue because I felt a certain type of way when somebody was labeled as being gifted. It left me feeling as though I was not. Had me feeling uh, uh, like I was not uh, um, uh, as smart. Sometimes it, it had me feeling as if I, 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 I couldn't measure up or meet up to um, that criteria of being gifted. <sighs> that was high school. And, 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 and I know maybe I may not be by myself in this matter, but, but we feel a certain type of way when, when, when a group is called gifted. And then we look at ourselves and we feel as if we are not as gifted as somebody else. Truth of the matter, if the truth be told, sometimes we don't even feel as if we have a gift at all. But this morning, regardless of how you feel, regardless of what you think of yourself, regardless of how others have called you to look at yourself, regardless of your background, regardless of what you did do or you did not do, Regardless of what you hadn't done yet, you are gifted too. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are gifted too. Uh, sometimes we feel like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good enough. Sometimes we feel like I can't do it, like they done it. Perhaps you felt that way, but, 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 but can I humbly tell you in God's house, in God's kingdom, for God's children, you are gifted too. You, 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 you are gifted, that's all right, yes sir. You are gifted too, and may I suggest to you, it's a good gift. It is a, 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 a good gift. James said every good gift and every perfect gift is given from above and cometh down from the Father of lights uh, with whom there is no variableness, there is no, no changing in him. Uh, but, but, uh, Corinthians, Paul still writes further and say, but one and the self same spirit worketh all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. Hmm. Interesting. I like what one writer said. Uh, gifts is the object that we are discussing this morning. And uh, uh, you may think into your mind, just what is a gift? What is gifts? When we start talking about this gift matter, gifts are what this writer says, supernatural abilities sovereignly given to strengthen his saints who are to serve one another, being good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Say it another way, preacher. A gift is what God has given you to bless somebody else. Uh, yes, sir, that's what a gift is. Just simply put, God has given you a uniqueness that only you have so you can use that uniqueness in a service to him. You are gifted too. In God's kingdom, there are no second class citizens. Uh, one may have more responsibility, but all of us have accountability. Say it another way. I may have more responsibility, but all of us have accountability. You have to give an account for the gift God has given you. You're gifted. You're, you're gifted. Two, I love this because God himself uh, uniquely picked out your gift without you having any kind of say so. Uh, I, I, let me say it one more time. God uniquely picked out your gift uh, uh, without your say so. He has picked out everybody's gift according to his own plan. Let me say it like this. God did not have no board. He didn't have to ask nobody. He didn't have to have a council around him. 
God did not have to have somebody else's consent. And even for yourself, God did not have to ask you, what do you think about this gift that I have for you? Some of us feel like these children uh, on Christmas Day uh, when we start thinking about our gift. You know, you know, one thing about kids, when they get those gifts around Christmas times, they find the biggest boxes. I mean, the biggest box they can find, you know, that you can give them something small, a little old bitty box. They'll look at that little old bitty box and they'll conclude ain't much in that box right there. Now, I'm going to just slide it to the side as if that gift don't have some uh, type of significance. Sometimes we're like the children. Sometimes we, we look at our gift as if it is so small. It is not of, 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 of importance or value. But may I suggest to you we need to realize who picked out this gift for you? God did it. God picked out your gifts. <laughs> no, we live in a world today that we don't realize the, the importance of the gift we have. But may I suggest to you, your gift may be the answer to somebody else's issue. It may be small in your eyes, but it just may be the answer to somebody else's issue so it can bring a change about in their life. I know I'm right about this thing. I know, I know, I know. I know, see, there are some people that need some help in this world. I don't know if y'all turn the news on. I don't know if y'all ears are open. I don't know if you're dealing with everyday life, but folks are, are need somebody to come alongside them to help strengthen them in the areas where they are weak in. That's what your gift is for, is to come alongside somebody to help strengthen them in areas where they are, are weak. Sometimes we look at ourselves and we look at others. We look at pastors and we think they have a gift. And our gift is not important. We look at deacons who are doing their thing and they, they look at, we look at the gift that they have and we, we, we think, ah, oh, I can't do that. We look at uh, the saints and, and we look at them operating and using their gifts and we, ah. But may I suggest to all of us who uh, are in here, we have a gift. And we have to use that gift to help somebody else. Uh, but the truth, but the truth be told. Quiet as it's kept, oftentimes we feel like we felt, or possibly I felt when I was in high school, we feel, felt a little insecure about this thing called a gift. Feel a little unsure or maybe not worthy, maybe a little intimidated when it comes to our gift. Gifts, gifts, gifts. The Bible declares or defines gifts as uh, gifts of, of, of apostleship, gifts of prophecy, gifts of teaching, gifts of wisdom, gifts of knowledge, gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, gifts of mercy, gifts of service, gifts of discernment, gifts of evangelism, gifts of exhortation, gifts of faith, gifts of giving, gifts of interpretation, gifts of leadership. Sometimes you can hear all of these lists and feel a little overwhelmed. Then you ask yourself the question, what is my gift? What is my gift? And then you seek out trying to define whatever your gift is, trying to put a label on it because now in 21st century, everybody want to have a title or a position or a label. Well, may I suggest to you, your gift is a service for somebody else. Even if you can't put a pin on it and point out and say, this is what mine is. Well, let me tell you, this is what your gift is. Go out and do something to help somebody else. And if change come about in their life, that's a gift. Uh, this morning, this morning, this morning, I ain't gonna be before you long. I just simply wanna encourage you from this text so it can help us um, uh, in the midst of our own gift. 
Because some of us, we don't feel as if we, 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 we could hold up to this gift thing. We, we, we don't feel like, uh, we don't feel like, we, we, we feel like this young man in this text. Man named Timothy. He felt maybe like you feel right now. He's a little intimidated at the task that he had to take on. Paul the apostle is writing to encourage him uh, um, that uh, uh, even though Paul was in a very discouraging place, he was writing to encourage Timothy. Let me see if I can make it plain to you. Paul, uh, we look at Paul and we, we, we think Paul as a superhuman a lot of time, but Paul was just like you and I, flesh and blood. He was just like you and I. He was apostle of God. He was an instrument or a mouthpiece for God. He was a servant of the most high God. But yet in this text, he's trying to uh, encourage Timothy from a place where he should have been discouraged. Oh, I, 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 okay, Lord. Uh, sometimes we feel like that. How can I encourage somebody else when I'm feeling so discouraged? How can I can lift somebody up when I feel so down sometimes? When I'm in a place where I'm down right about, how in the world can I encourage somebody when I'm in a place of discouragement? Paul was in a Roman prison. And his crime was simply that it preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hmm. <laughs> And, 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 and at the time he was about to write this thing, it was discouraging. He was in a discouraging place because uh, this is the second letter to Timothy. First letter, Paul had high hopes. Of, of meeting with Timothy. He had high hopes of, of, of coming to fellowship with Timothy. That's in uh, 1 Timothy. But in 2 Timothy, Paul found himself in a position to where his mind was settled. And it was made up that he was not going to see Timothy anymore. He was about to be beheaded by Nero. But even in discouragement, he found a way to encourage somebody else. Uh, it was, it was, it was, it was the confidence that he had in the God that he served. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning who find themselves in a discouraging situation. Your news ain't always good. Your circumstance ain't always favorable. Your house may not always be together, but God can use you to encourage somebody else even though you're in the midst of a discouraging. But Paul had confidence not in his situation, but he had confidence in the God that he served. See, that's where, that's, uh, that's, that, 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 that uh, uh, let me say it in our term, men, that was separate the men from the boys. Because your confidence must be in the creator and not in, in the creature. His confidence was not in what was going on around him. His confidence was in the God that can control what was going on around him. And Paul was firmly persuaded in the God that kept him. He was firmly persuaded in the God who, who he served. And so Paul is writing to encourage Timothy and he tells him, I done fought a good fight. I done finished my course. I done kept the faith. And Paul knew without a shadow of a doubt that there was a crown of righteousness laid up for him by the Lord himself. Paul knew and understood that the gift that God had given him, he had exercised it to the fullest. Oh, it's almost like us watching those giants that we call spiritual figures. We, we, we watch and see how those bishops that uh, stood up and stood in the gap and they operated in the gift that God had called them. Yeah. 
Oh, I could call a roll. I know, I know we look at uh, Bishop Coleman and we, we think about our own uh, father in the faith. Bishop Gene, we look at pastors and we, we look at church mothers and we look at brothers and, and sisters. Maybe it was your mother and maybe it was your father. Maybe it was a grandmother, but it was somebody that stood in the gap and exercised the gift. The gift that God had given them. And you and I, we saw how they operated. We saw how God used them. We, 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 we saw how, 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 how they were confident in what they did. And it's not that we, we, we hate on them. We love them. But we may not be as confident as they were. Why? Because I know the turmoil and, and, and the headache and, and the frustration and the hardship. I know the suffering. I know, uh, let me say it like this, see, in 2021, even for uh, uh, being in this role, people look on the TV and they see preachers preaching uh, the gospel and somehow folk look at that and they say, that's what I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's what I want to do. And we give off the impression because you see folk got a, a plane and a, a new house and new cars and they can go and do just whatever they did. They, they, I'm not talking about that because, because one thing about all of that, when I look at this thing, uh, 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 it, it wasn't the case with Paul. Uh, it was because he had suffered. Oh, oh when I think about Bishop Jean, I, I look at the stress. That was on his face. I look at the, the, the things that he had to endure. If you really look at the hardship of, of the gifts that God give, um, you may not be so quick. You may not be as confident. I know I can identify with Timothy because Timothy had looked at Paul. He had watched Paul. He had heard the testimony. I ain't so quick if I was Timothy to have 39 lashes on my back, save one. I'm not so quick to run and try to operate in my gift when I think about being shipwrecked. I, I'm, I'm not so quick to run and operate and so confident in my gift when folk gonna reject you and talk about you and say all manner of evil against you. Timothy was a little, he was a little intimidated. And Paul is trying to encourage him just as he's trying to encourage us. And I know if I could just stand here and, and, and the role I call and remember how, how all of these spiritual leaders that, that, that have left us, all of those people who were significant in your life were, were trying to offer you words of, encouragement so you and I could be confident notice what they were trying to do they didn't want us just to be spectators they wanted us to be in the game see what we did is we saw them operate we saw how God used them we saw what they used to do and we became spectators Instead of participators, we got too busy watching the TV instead of exercising the gift that God has given us. Uh, that seems to be the temperature of the text because I know Paul encouraged Timothy and he told Timothy, neglect not the gift. Neglect not the gift that is in the, uh, let me see, let me see. Let no man despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, uh, in, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Here it is. Till I come, give attention to reading, exhortation, to doctrine. Here it is. Ne neglect not the gift that is in, in you. In other words, you got to encourage yourself, you got to talk to yourself, and you got to realize for yourself you have a gift on the inside of you, and it's time for you to start operating in the gift that God has given you. Uh, 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like the ones that you admire so much, the one that influenced you so much, just like that mother that you remember right about now as you're listening to me preach, or that brother that you saw God use mightily, you have a gift that you got to hone in for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that gift is for you to help somebody else. It's not for you to just sit there and, and think to yourself, oh, mm -hmm. So it is now Paul encourages Timothy in the text, and the text is tailored to teach us a few things about being gifted. Notice in verse 6, he says, Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that uh, uh, you stir up the gift. Paul said, this is what I want you to do. I need for you to stir up the gift of God. Stirring up comes from a, a Greek word that means to give life again to a fire. To, be, to rekindle a flame. I ain't going to deal with girlfriend and boyfriend this morning. I, I, I'm going to just simply say stirring up something uh, means uh, that something had been neglected or, or grown weak. You know what it's like when you go outside and, and, and you light a fire. And the fire burns and the fire burns, the fire burns until it burns all the way low and, and, and there's nothing but ashes there. And then you see the fire and nothing but ashes there, but a little smoke is still coming up through that thing. Stirring it up, it means you take a stick and you stir it up so, 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 you, so the fire can, 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 can burn a blaze. And then you got to put some wood or something that will burn on top of, uh, 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 of the fire. Uh, you got to feed it with something. You, you, you got to feed it. Uh, I know you may feel a little timid and I know you may uh, feel like you're insecure, overwhelmed. You may be unsure, but you got to feed the fire that's on the inside of you. You do know there's a fire in you. Oh, you, 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 you do know that, that there is a fire on the inside. Okay, I, I hope you're with me because uh, all of us have a fire uh, within us, but you got to stir. You got you to gotta, you gotta stir up the fire that is within you. You got to stir up the fire that's within you. You got to continue to do some things uh, for a fire to keep burning. You got to continue to put wood on it, right? I mean, you got to, you, you got to continue. Timothy wanted to take a back seat when he thought about this gift. And Paul is writing to encourage him to continue. Don't stop. You got to continue. Uh, you you got to continue in, in doing well. You, you got to continue in, 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 in doing what's good. I wonder for some of us what has caused us to lose the fire that's within us. I wonder what caused us to be just a spectator when we used to be in the game. I wonder what caused that. Yeah, maybe what caused that is that the, 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 the gift or the service that you performed uh, got to a point to where it was too difficult for you. You found yourself doing good, and it seems as if the good was not doing anything good. And it caused you some concern. I know you may have felt just like Jeremiah felt when Jeremiah was preaching the word of God. He was doing exactly what God told him to do and it seems as if the results wasn't coming as fast as he won't. And then Jeremiah said, well, I ain't going to say not another word in his name. I'm not going to speak in his name anymore. But, but, but may I suggest to you there was a fire on the inside. Oh. He was in a place where he just couldn't help himself. Oh, he said, the word of God is like a fire that shut up in my bones. And so he had to continue in the well doing. I know, I know you got to continue to stir up. You got to continue to put some wood on, on, on the fire. You, you got to continue in, in love. Oh, God, help me in the house. You got to continue in love. I know, I know, I know. I know you're gifted. And, and one of the hardest things for us as being gifted, we look as if our ministry is on the outside when it may just be on the inside. 
What do you mean? It may not just be ongoing in the streets, but it may just be off inside my family. Preach a. It may be off in my family's house. And then I find myself one of the most, uh, 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 the easiest ways to get us off our square is to deal with a family member. Woo! God help us in this place. And it may just be a family member that you tried to reach, you tried to love, and every time you tried to love them, they rejected you. And you found yourself in a situation to where you tried it in the family. And it seems as if it didn't work. And so you went on the outside and you tried it on the outside. And it seems as if that did not work. And then you found yourself in a situation to where you became a spectator. But may I suggest to us we have to continue in love. Oh, you got to continue in love. You got to continue in love, folks, even if they are not so. They're not so. They're not so, oh God help me, they're not so lovable. It's not so easy, it's not, it's not so easy, but may I suggest to you, uh, 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 let me give you some, some, some good wisdom. You can't love them in your own strength. You can't love them in your own strength because if you try to love folk in your own strength, you'll become weary. You'll worry and you'll walk away. <laughs> but when you love them from the power of God, you realize and know that God is the one that gives you the energy that you need so the fire can keep on. So now, you continue in well-doing, continue in love, but not only do you continue in well-doing, continue in love, you gotta continue in the grace that God has given you. You got to continue in the grace of God. May I suggest to you, God loves you enough to keep his hand on you. God loves you enough. He loved you enough to give you the gift. He loved you enough to give you the gift. Because he is not like Santa Claus. All of us has been bad uh, sometime in our life, but God said, I'm going to give you the gift in it. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, before you were in your mother's womb, God had gifted you. He knew you. He, he knew who you were. He knew exactly how you were going to be. And God said, I'm going to still give you a gift. So now what are you saying? You have to continue in these things. That's how you stir up the gift. So now, so now, so now, so now, so now. So now you may be in this position or in this place, Paul says, Timothy, stir up the gift. Notice where it is. It's in you. It is in you. I know you looked at, at those prominent people who, who you, 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 you concluded you were mesmerized. I know, I know, you know, I, I was mesmerized by when I used to look at Bishop and how God would, would, would use him powerfully in my, I, I could remember days where he was at up in GPD and, and God was on him, his, the spirit was, uh, was on him so tough and, and so heavy, he would just walk down the aisle almost falling out. I used to sit in the back because I didn't like to sit in the front because I just want to see everything, how folk respond, how folk uh, uh, react. I wanted to see how, how I wanted to see God operate in the natural. And I looked at Bishop and I noticed how God was using him. I noticed how God uh, had his hand on him. I, I noticed that. I, know, I noticed that and I would just sit calmly in the back, quietly in the back. And I was like, man, whew, God got his hand on him. And as I look at him, I thought about me. And when I thought about me, I said to myself, ain't no way. Preach it. I know some folk like to run and they want to take positions uh, and they want to take all of these responsibilities. But me, I wanted to sit and stay preach in the back. I didn't want to go to the front because I looked at me. And there's a lot that go into all of that and I knew for myself. Mm -mm. I was a little, I was a little 
intimidated by what I saw. I love what I saw. I respected what I saw. I honored what I saw. I did not hate on what I saw. I just knew how could God use me, little old me. So now I wonder where is that gift? And I felt like Timothy Field, but the text tells us it's in it's in you. What are you trying to say? That person that you remember in your mind, that you used to see operate in the power of God, who was used by God, and you saw how God used them to operate in their gift. They were gifted, but God sent me by to tell somebody, you, you're gifted. You're gifted too. Uh, but maybe like Timothy, the opposition that you're going to face may be too great for you. That may be one of the reasons that you gave up when you were so fervent. Maybe, maybe the work maybe is too hard for you. Maybe, maybe when you think about what God has placed in you, it's too much for you. May I suggest to you God won't give you something that he won't enable you to do. He won't give you a gift that he will not enable you to do. And a lot of times we find ourselves in a situation to where we may have done something for God. We may have been the type who were operating in our gift, but we lost sight of the giver of the gift. Oh. When you lose sight of the one who gave you the gift and try to operate in the gift that he gave you, you'll, find, you'll start depending on yourself. Maybe that's why I have become dry. Maybe that's why I have become stale. Maybe that's why, because I'm trying to do a spiritual thing in a fleshly way. I need to help somebody. Even for your family, where you're so kingly to be fleshly, you have to operate from a spiritual way. Because even if you lean on the arm of your flesh with your family, you're going to fail. You're going to become dry. I might well make it plain. You're going to get angry. You're going to start fussing. And you may just like get like Peter for just a split moment, just a split second, and say some things that you really didn't intend to say because it wasn't your spirit that had the best of you. It was your flesh that got the... Uh, I know that may not be nobody in Red Oak Grove who ever stepped out of their spirit and walked into their flesh just for a split second and then they snap back and said, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And we found ourselves in a situation to where we had to go back, ask for forgiveness to the one that we were trying to reach and then go to God and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you in the midst of this situation. So it is now when you find yourself uh, in the midst of a situation like that, uh, you may feel like you're weak and weary, but God is trying to tell us, I've gifted you. I've given you what you need. And I'm the one that's going to uh, uh, help you succeed in what it is that I placed you here for. Timothy found himself in a situation to where Paul encourages him and tells him uh, uh, um, that gift is in you. And Paul, um, by the putting on of his hands, Paul uh, was not the one. Oh, yeah, let's deal with it just for a moment. Uh, 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 be careful. I know when you look at this thing, a lot of folk want to run to some people and tell some folk, this is the gift I want. And then you go to somebody so they can lay their hands on you to try to deposit in you a gift that is not for you. That's not what he says. That's not what he mean. And Paul understood enough to know that, that, that it was God who had given Timothy the gift. God gave it. Paul was just an instrument that he used because he knew who Timothy 
was. But the gift came from God. Give you three things that we're going to get out your way. Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of, of fear. He has not given us the spirit. Paul reminds Timothy what to do in the first, uh, uh, in verse 6, but he, he tells him why he needs to stir the gift up in this verse. He said, God has not given you that spirit of, 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 of being timid. That didn't come from God. He didn't give you an attitude of, of, of being faint in heart, trembling in soul. Oh, man. When you think of this thing, if, 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 if you think of this thing and put yourself in Timothy's shoes, you can identify with him. Because of the harshness of the ministry at that time. Yeah. Uh, but, but Paul tells him, God ain't gave you that spirit. He's saying, settle yourself. God did not give you that type of, of spirit. But he has given you a spirit of, of power. Yeah. Power. Power comes from a word, dunamis. Well, we get the word dynamite. But I don't want you to look at the word dynamite because dynamite, when you think of some dynamite, it'll blow some up. Uh, you are gifted too. But I don't want you to blow nothing up. Too many times we done blew up some stuff. Uh, too many times uh, some preachers have blew up some ministries. Too many times we done blew up some marriages. Too many times we done blew up some family relationships. Too many times we done blew up some relationships on the job. Uh, no, not in the, the sense to, of where we blow it up, but in the sense that we build it. Build it up. God has given you a gift to help you build up some things. You have within you that thing to help build up somebody. Uh, the gift that you have, you have, you have it so you can go alongside somebody and build them up. Sometimes folk walk around with a fake phone and false smile on their face and you know that is fake. You know that is not real. You know within your spirit. How do you know? Because the spirit within you give you a spirit of discernment. And so now you go to them and tell them, ask the question, how you doing today? Most folk, they'll lie right there in your face. I'm blessed by the Lord. I'm highly favored. And you look at them and you say, are you sure? Uh, are, are you sure? Uh, and they, 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 some you may have to hard press, but, but, but others you just, uh, are you sure? And they'll break down right then at that moment. And somewhere in the midst of all of that, because of the constructive power of God on the inside of you, the spirit of the living God on the inside of you to help build somebody up, the spirit sparks up a conversation. And when the conversation is sparked up somehow, some way, you don't even know what to say. Sometimes you may not even know what to say. But it's the God within you will give you the right words to say at the hour that you need it. So now when you walk away from the conversation, when they were in a situation to where they were torn down, now they walk away built up. So it is now. In this stage, God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but he has given you a spirit of, of power. A power, 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 power. Uh, he's giving you that, that spirit of, of divine power. Maybe you need this power this morning to help you come alive once, once again. Maybe, 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 maybe you get, but may I suggest to you, it's already on the inside of you. You just need to. You, you just need to stir it up. See, 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 some folks look as if they, and we pray, God, give me more power, and God don't answer. 
The reason why he don't answer is because he know the power is already in you. And he tells us it's not her responsibility to stir up your gift. It's your responsibility to stir up the gift that we, that's within you. So the power is already in in you. Second thing is, God has not uh, given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Notice, um, that's the means of your ministry, power. If anything is going to change, it's going to take some power. It's going to take some power from, from, from the Lord, that inner power, that, that, that spiritual power, that supernatural power that God has placed in you, but that's the means of your ministry. But love is the motivation of your ministry. <sighs> That's a little tough. Because I'm going to ask you a hard question. Do you really love folk like we claim we love folks? For you to exercise your gift, it must be motivated by love. It must be motivated by love. But it's not a love that you stretch out by the arm of your flesh. It's a love that is drawn from the love of God. When you draw from the love of God, that love says, in spite of how I feel, in spite of what you say, in spite of how you reject me, in spite of how this thing is going to affect me, I'm going to operate in the gift that God has given me because I love. <sighs> I don't know if we love folk like we say we love folk. Because if I can sit there and I have the answer to somebody else's problem, I don't know if I really love them like I say I love them because I don't want to express what I have. Uh, 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 I don't want to give them the love that I really have because you know why I have become a, a spectator. But Paul tells Timothy, you can't lay around and watch the crap. Timothy, you can't just look at, let me just bring it on 2021. Hey, you can't just look at all of the bishops that went before you. All of the pastors that God used. All of them who we know, uh, your mother, your grandmother. Hey, you can't just sit and watch how Desi used to love the Lord, how she used to express her, her love to folk who, 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 who were not so favorable uh, uh, that her love should have been expressed to. <laughs> Ain't in the notes, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> I was intrigued by my grandmother because she would express her love to anybody that she would meet. <laughs> it was unique to me because some folks, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say back then, and I'm like, you know, Grandma, you might well let them folks go home by the business now. You know, I mean, you know, just, just, just. You know. But no, well, the way she was, she had an open door. Tell them to come on in. See somebody walking down the road. Tell them to, hey, you are you hungry? She would express her love. I know, I know she, and that was not just for, for, for those who were family. But even for folk who wasn't family. She would express her love. Even for those who were not so, so lovable. That does something to me. <laughs> Help me, God. <laughs> but it was a gift that God gave her. <laughs> but may I suggest to you, love is a gift that God has given all the saints. <laughs> it's something that you have on them. <sighs> Mellow just a little bit. <laughs> Even for that person on your job. That causing you some kind of trouble. There's some love on the inside of you. 
even for them. <laughs> for the boss that's always on your case, <laughs> when you're always on time, <laughs> you're always doing your job right, <laughs> and somebody else, he let make it. <laughs> and when you feel something stirring up on the inside of you, may I tell you, there's something on the inside of you. <laughs> there's some love on the inside of you, even, even for them last thing, and I'm through. He says, uh, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And the last thing, of a sound, a sound, a sound, a sound mind. This mindset that you and I have is a mindset that comes directly from God through the power of God's spirit. It's his spirit that enables us to have a sound mind to calm us down when it seems as if life is raging, when it seems as if the ministry is tough, when it seems as if that gift that God has given you, it may not be so significant in your own mind, in your own uh, uh, psyche, but God said, I done gave you a sound mind so you can think right, so you can operate right, so you can act in a way that you're under that you're under, that you're under control. When you find yourself having a sound mind, when you operate in the gift that God has given you, you can operate in a way that you look like you're cool, calm, and collect. Even if it feels like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to say. Even if I don't know what I'm going to do. Even when I feel like I'm in a situation to where it's too big for me. God say, I done gave you a spirit of a sound, of a sound mind. Can I tell somebody in the house, I'm through, that you are gifted, gifted too. Because you have power on the inside of you. You have love on the inside of you. You have a sound mind on the inside of you. And it's all in, uh, comes from the enablement of God's spirit. But the challenge is, <laughs> but the challenge is, you have a responsibility. You have a part to play. God is the coach. The life, if I could use these terms, is the game. And there are players that have to play in the game. But you have a responsibility. I need for you to know this responsibility is great. Because for all of us who are gifted, and that's everybody, we have to give an account. We have, I'm not here to put nobody down. Because even Paul, when he wrote this thing to Timothy, it was a letter of encouragement, not discouragement. To lift him up, but he wanted him to understand this thing is critical now. You have a gift in you, but you have a responsibility to play or a part to play in this gift. You have to stir this thing up. In other words, you have to get in the game. Why? Because I'm dependent on you. He is dependent on you. You are dependent on him. She is dependent on him. What are you trying to say? All of us need one another. Because with all of these gifts, it's still just like the body. Functioning real well. Think of your favorite place to be. I'm done and I'm through. Think of your favorite place to be. That place that you like to get away from. That place that you would like to go to. Go to. That place where you feel so good. You're good, calm, and relaxed. You're just having a hallelujah good time. That's what it feels like when we're all are operating in our gifts. We are feeling that, 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 
That, that feeling that we feel if you like to go to the beach and the sun is shining and the, the wind is blowing. You're admiring all of God's uh, uh, glamour and God's glory. You just, you just, you're just fully relaxed. You are, you're, you're fully satisfied. That's what it feels like when we all operate in the gifts that God has given us. And even if you go to that favorite place and it's raining outside. You're not even bothered about the rain because we are all in the place where God wants us to be. Paul wanted Timothy to understand he was about to leave. He was about to go. His time was drawing near. We can think about all those saints of God who have gone on who God used. And the, the memories are stamped in our brain. They are embedded in our heart. But they have gone on. I'll tell you a story and I'm going to I remember a time where Bishop Jean came to me. I wasn't trying to be nobody or trying to do nothing. I was just trying to help somebody. And so I would ask questions. I would, I would ask questions, make statements, answer questions, trying to help somebody. And he saw something in me that I didn't see in me. And something happened. I don't know what happened. I never found it out because he kept it to himself. Somehow he was a shepherd that did not want to sow no kind of discord in the church. But he came to me and he said, son, continue to do what it is God has called you to do. And I looked at Bishop and I wondered, I was too intimidated to ask him what was going on. But I said, okay, Bishop. I just kept on. I said, Bishop, if you need me, just let me know. If I could help you, just, just, just tell me. But he saw something in me, and something apparently was going on, but he sheltered me. He kept something from me to help me. I don't know if he saw something like Paul saw in Timothy that he saw in me. But all he told me was to continue to do what it is God has called you to do. Somehow, some way, I'm standing right here today. I didn't ask for it. Truth of the matter, I ran from it. <laughs> but he saw something that I didn't see. But he knew something that God knew. But today I'm standing here saying to myself, I must be gifted too. Can I encourage you? Can I encourage you? That wasn't for me. That was for you. You are gifted too. You're not second class, but first class. You're not secondary, but you're first. You're not secondary, say it again, but you're primary. You are a gift of God. And he has given you a gift. I'm through weak standing. He has given you a gift. He has given you a gift. He has given you. He has given you a gift. May I encourage you? Don't walk away and stop sitting down. Get in the game. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you now to say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for, for your word. Thank you, God, for your people, God. We ask your God that you would touch. Touch your mind, the minds of your people. Touch your, your people's heart, God. For only you know the gift that you have given, God. Help us to realize what you've given us. And we ask you, God, to continually give us the confidence 
that we need so we can exercise whatever it is that you placed in us. Forgive us, oh God, when we, we done sit down and we seemingly have walked away, when we have become comfortable, God, just sitting on the sideline, when you want us in the game of life, knowing that this thing is more than a game, it's real life. There are people who need us, and we have the answer to somebody else's prayer. Help us to realize it, God. Help us to walk boldly in it, knowing, God, that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Touch your people now the, uh, uh, this morning, God. Bless them oh, uh, now, oh God, for you only you know, God, the thing that they face. We pray, oh God, that this word will give them a, an uplifting spirit, that they would go out knowing that they have been gifted not by man, but by the eternal God, who has given them a supernatural abilities that they may go out and tell somebody about the goodness of God and that testimony alone that it will change somebody else's life. We say thank you now, God, for your people, God. Thank you now for your word, God. Thank you now for each and every one under the sound of my voice, God, for you know their different problems. You know their different issues, God. I'm just asking you simply to be God. Allow your hand to rest on their life. Allow your hand to rest on their situation, God. So it would uplift them, God. So they can look unto you, God. The author and the finisher of their faith, God. Knowing that you are God that can keep them. That can comfort them, God. That can show them the way, God. We ask you to do it now, oh God. You said in your word, pray for all, man, God. We pray for our brothers and sisters everywhere, God. Those who are standing in the pulpit, standing in the gap to proclamate and pro preach your word, God. We pray for them, God, that you would continually put a hedge of protection around them. Not only them, those are who are listening to them, God. Bless your people, God. Not only your people, God, you said pray for all men, God. So we pray for this nation, God. We pray for this president, God. We pray for all those who are in Congress, those who are making laws, God. We pray, God, for law enforcement, God. We pray, oh God, for the mayors, God. We pray for the governors, God. We pray for this state. We're praying for them and we lift them up unto you, God. We pray, oh God, as we get ready to leave this place, but never your presence, that you put a hedge of protection around us, that we get home safe, and when we get there, our homes are safe. We say thank you, thank you. and we love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining us today at Red Oak Grove, Church of the Living God. I pray on today that this encouraging message sinks into your heart and do well in your life as this week comes and goes. Join us next week for our service starting at 11.30 a.m. Thank you for listening. We will see you next time.